All right, internet, I hope that you had a blast. <laughs> Welcome back to Lagged, home of legal assistance for game developers. The last part of this episode was about why you want the people you hire to be independent contractors and how to make sure they remain that way. The second part of this focuses on what kind of problems you may face if you don't follow the tips from the first video. We also talk about what extra steps you'll need to take so that you own all of the content created by your independent contractor. You may be wondering why, oh why does it matter where someone works or on whose computer they do it on? Lauren from New Meteorites, why are you just making up rules that I have to follow that cause me problems? Other than the IRS breathing down your neck, the people you're working with, this is you and the people you're working with, uh, if they get mad at you, they can come back later and sue you for back pay, for other benefits, and in some states, triple the amount that they would have made if you classified them correctly. So even if you think no one will sue you because you're buddies, Sometimes bad or unexpected things happen and people need money. Babies arrive, investments fail, house gets burned down without insurance. Stuff happens. And there are lawyers who make a living for their entire lives off of convincing people like your friend to come back and see you. So now they're buddies. You don't want to be one of the employers that gets stuck with one of these guys. You also don't want the game that you work on to become hugely popular and then have some programmer who did weeks of flat rate coding claim that he was an employee and therefore entitled to more money than what you paid him. Of course, employees are misclassified as independent contractors all the time and no one gets in trouble or gets sued over it. I don't have the statistics right now, but studies say that there are more independent contractors working right now who are misclassified than independent contractors who are classified correctly. So yes, there is a chance, and a pretty good one, that nothing will ever happen, even if you don't follow any of the tips in this video. But the point is that if you can follow any of the tips easily, and you take a half hour to learn a bit more about the independent contractor laws, you could save yourself days, weeks, or months of future hassles. And if you have any questions along the way, you can always contact us at newmediarights.org, and we can answer questions that you have. Let's move on to question three. Question three. What extra steps do game developers need to take so that they own all of the work that their independent contractors make for them? So now you've followed some or all of the tips, and the person you hired is definitely an independent contractor. No doubt about it. You're done, right? Not so fast. The law has one more curveball to throw you to make before you're all the way done. The rule is that if an independent contractor makes anything creative for you and your game, even if you pay for that work, you don't actually own the rights to it. Isn't that stupid? In order to actually own the full rights to use that creative work that your independent contractor makes for your game, you need what's called an assignment agreement. <laughs> These are pretty simple to put together yourself and often necessary to prevent problems about who owns what down the line. Assignment agreements will be the subject of a future video all about the potential types of agreements you may be seeing during your career, but for now it's worth understanding a few things. Thing number one, it's best to get this assignment agreement signed before the independent contractor does any work. Of course, it can be signed at any time, even after the work has been completed, but if they don't sign it when they start working, you run the risk of them not wanting to sign it later on. Or that person could completely disappear on you. It's not like everyone is out to screw you, but it happens enough that we have to say it. Thing number two, assignment agreements have to be made in writing. They can't be made orally. If you've already hired someone without an assignment or a contract to do work for you and you're worried about your rights and you don't understand what we're talking about, Feel free to contact us at New Media Rights and at our website, newmediarights.org. In conclusion, thanks for sticking around and watching Lagged. If you learned something or like what we do, please donate at our YouTube channel or at newmediarights.org.